<clears throat> okay. We will. الذنوب تسيت ويت القلوب قد يورث الذل إدمان كيف بيجي إن شاء الله تعالى؟ yes go ahead with brother حسن أضل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I pray this reaches you all well and in best health آمين we are excited to have you all and May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all for joining us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, us all to enter Ramadan with good health. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to leave Ramadan for, as a people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love and we're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Ramadan. Ameen. Allah wa khairan for joining us. Everyone ameen, else ameen. for joining us on Facebook. Jazakallah khair for joining us. Uh, very great to see you all. Alhamdulillah. Today's session is, of course, about uh, Ramadan and how we can prepare ourselves better for Ramadan as it approaches in less than a week, less than four days. SubhanAllah, could be Thursday night, inshaAllah ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it blessing for us all. Ameen. It's good Today's to have you, session. brother Hassan. I really, I really enjoy doing programs with you, mashallah. You're the man. <laughs> it is, mashallah, it's an honor to have you with us. And definitely, I love de- doing these with you. I miss doing these um, in the masala, but alhamdulillah, yeah. we'll do what we I, can, inshallah. I will be there in five minutes. Five minutes? Awesome, inshallah. Close. So, to those... You're cutting off. I think your internet is uh, service is going in and out. Um, so for those who are joining, alhamdulillah, today's session is going to cover four points. The first of them is going to be the impact of sins that we have on our life. Uh, and inshallah ta'ala, Sheikh Mamdu will share with us the what the scholars have said, what we know from the sunnah, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to. Then inshallah, we will move to the next <laughs> point, which is the default state that we have as being in mistakes and what is the definition of what we call absolute perfection and can we achieve absolute perfection and that idea itself is that perfection for us is to keep making mistakes perfection is that we're gonna be sinless and we'll talk about that inshallah for the second point the, the third point inshallah is going to be seeking the rahmah of allah and understanding the rahmah of allah how close we are to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fourth point, inshallah, is to how we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the act of seeking forgiveness and seeking Allah's, Allah's forgiveness. And this is our first session. And the next session, again, is going to be, which is going to be on uh, the 21st. And it's going to be traps of shaitan and addictions. And we're having, alhamdulillah, one of our psychiatrists joining us. So we're very uh, excited to have uh, one of the doctors, Dr. Asana, join us for that session. And then we will end with people Ramadan on the 23rd and their successes. So that's basically the gist of it. So without further ado, inshallah ta'ala, Shaykhna will ask you the first question on, on our agenda, the impact of sins. So I have heard and I've read that how sins can impact our, our risk. Sins can have a negative impact on our daily lives, on, you know, one of the things we know from one of the chapters in the Quran, that how if someone were to go away from the remembrance of Allah, then they will become depressed. So MashaAllah, to... yes, Brother Hassan, MashaAllah, uh, you, I, I like your directness, you just get to the point, <laughs> straight. Uh, before we, we get, I wanted to tell my uh, beloved community and all our listeners that the month of Ramadan is not the month that we have to give long lectures and stuff like that. Neither this is our intention even now. We, what we do is just reminders, we're refreshing our memories, we're reminding each other, we are uh, communicating with ourselves before we communicate with anybody else. Right, Brother Hassan? So this is this is, this is is what we are, we are doing. We're thinking aloud with you, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. So this is number one. Number two, uh, since I, I, I want this to be the madkhal. Madkhal means the entrance. Because you mentioned um, uh, the, the, the impact 
the what we what we what you touch, what you suffer from, what you experience. But what comes before that, like, is your state of being itself, as a human being, our state itself, once we sin, is altered. Okay, Brother Hassan, it is altered. Like the state of innocence. Remember Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam? The state of innocence, him and his wife, changed and altered, and they started seeing their, 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 their defects and their shortcomings once they disobeyed Allah. The state of shaitan, from being like with the angels, it is altered to be someone who is cursed. You know what I mean? So right. the, the, the whole being uh, is altered. Once the whole being is altered, that state of innocence, state of spirituality, state of servitude to Allah, state of being a loving uh, 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 creature of Allah is altered once you sin. Sin means you disobey him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that leads to all the things that you mentioned, uh, among them is like uh, dearth in uh, in supplies, diseases, problems, uh, every everything around you. Unless you catch yourself and repent to Allah, which we will talk about in that third and fourth point, inshallah, this is going to continue like a ripple effect, will have like a dominant effect on you. All right. Mm. So I'm just putting it in, in perspective. So if we start first and uh, before the risk, Brother Hassan, because someone can come back at you and they say, uh, you know, there are many kuffar, many disobedient people and Allah give them more risk. So what are you going to say about that? You know, you know what I mean? So it's not the only we do not want to confine it to the impact. I mean, the fruit, I mean, not the fruit, the, the physical manifestation. Physical yes, you do not want to, to, to confine it like that. No, the sin itself make you someone else within yourself and Allah looks at you differently. Allah looks at you differently and then your your life becomes shorter and and your, 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 your barakah is taken away, the blessing. You may be t making billions of dollars once you start disobeying Allah. It does not mean your risk is more. Okay, your risk is more when you. I hope I hope I'm uh, making some sense. If you can add, please repeat that know, and, and, point because you're cutting off. Okay, so you you a person may start disobeying Allah, and when he's obeying Allah, he's in tight situation. Once he start or she start disobeying Allah, they will have plenty of things. They will make millions or even billions of dollars. It does not mean that the risk, risk, the word risk means provision of Allah. The risk is increasing. No, their finances are increasing. But risk is a big, huge, blessed word from Allah, Azza wa Jal. Means you have a blessing in it. Blessing is not there, means there is no risk, even though you have lots of money. Because Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, in Surah Al-An'am, uh, and when they forgot what we delivered to them, means they sinned, they disobeyed. We opened the gates of every material thing on them, right? Until they became distracted and happy with what they got, we took them suddenly, so they are in, in punishment for eternity. If you if you can, uh, you know, interpret this ayah for our audience in your in your language, addressing the youth and all that, that would be great, brother Hassan. The fact that they disobeyed in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yes, yes. Because youth see that all the time, right? They see someone like who's disobedient and uh, and they are cool. You know what I mean? They are like cool. Everybody's around them. They are like the what do you call it? Like the person who heads the click or whatever and then you know when they are becoming practicing everybody's away from them <laughs> right because they are not doing the social what are the no social norms are at that time all right so yeah. risk basically yes so please go ahead uh, the risk itself is connected which one of the things that you mentioned was which is the life becomes shorter which is a very interesting part which we don't uh, we don't think about much life mm -hmm. being shorter and how that could be a punishment at times um, mm -hmm. because life being shorter that means that you have less time to do good deeds for the sake of Allah Sorry. you have less duration 
one of the example I remember of Idris, I know it's from Izaliyad, the story itself, and how mm. uh, he had a certain amount of you know years, and when he's speaking to a, uh, one of the angels' friend he has, and he's like, okay, tell me, how do, can I raise my good deeds? And he says, if you live longer, you'll have more good deeds. And he's like, really? Like, how can I, you know, can raise the numbers? And then, of course, we have the story where he's, you know, goes up to Allah and then Allah takes his life. In the, in the well, the even, yeah, even though it is Israelite, as you mentioned, the meaning is correct, though. Whether, whether the incident took place or not, that's not the issue for us here. But did the Prophet وسلم, say something similar? Yes. He, he, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the hadith narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith Anas, I think, radiallahu anhu, uh, he, he said, Man arada, whoever wants, and yun sa'alahu fi umrihi, that his life be, become stretched, like his life become longer, wa yubsatalahu fi rizqihi, and that his provision would be expanded, and here answers your point, wa yun sa'alahu fi rizqi, fal yasur rahimahu. So be good to the, the kings, your family. I believe Sheikh's feed is getting connected because the internet is being changed. But yes, so we will go back to, as he's saying, this is one of the beautiful hadith of Rasulullah that one of the ways we prolong our life is having good relationship with our kin, uh, with our family. And that prolongs our life and that also helps us gain, uh, invest into more good deeds for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because none of us can ever guarantee like all our good deeds can actually guarantee us in Jannah, right? These good deeds are just as a presentation. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is the one who will lead us to Jannah al Fardaus al A'la. And of course, we know about this uh, from a lot of the narrations, alhamdulillah, that, you know, the biggest question, but our deed take us to Jannah or Allah's mercy will take us to Jannah. Our deed makes us presentable in front of Jannah, in front of Allah. And Allah's mercy is the one who would then give us the eternal paradise, which makes no sense, right? Why would we live for 60, 70 years and then we get eternal life? That doesn't work with the equation. But Allah subhanahu wa mercy is the one who's allowing us to go and have this eternal life. So, Shakna, we were mentioning, let me unmute you. We were mentioning what you just mentioned about kinship and how it can affect, since can have a negative effect to, uh, for just part of our shorter life and how we can do, what can we do to make sure that we don't have, don't get into the, the idea of, we can prolong our life so we can have uh, uh, more good deeds. The, for the audience who's joining now and for the audience who are here, understanding most of the time we don't start with sins. Most of the time the discussion is about mercy of Allah, who's Allah and all this stuff. All my curriculum starts with that. But this time we wanted to start with sin because the sin has an impact. The entire series will connect at the end how Allah is so merciful and we will talk about this. But we have to recognize that we are making mistakes in our lives to be able to correct them. And there are so much of content that we know that how hearts get blackened. The person who commits sins against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, you lose your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ultimately, those who lose connection with Allah, as the Sheikh mentioned, as we read in the Quran, they will live a very depressed life. Sahih. Allah said that in Surah Taha. Surah they Taha. It's a very depressed life. It's a very, yeah. like, literally, who's going to help you? Yeah. There's no medicine in the world. And that's why you see a lot of the culture where drugs come involved and many other things like these many vices that we take help of because we can't find our spiritual high, which is mm. supposed to be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we all have a bound uh, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all, one of the statements I'm reading, we are spiritual beings trapped in a physical body. It's not the other way around. Mm -hmm. We're not a physical being, you know, joined with a spiritual aspect. No, we're spiritual beings. Oh, that's beings. a shell. This is a shell. Right. right. And we are spiritual beings. And this is a big impact. So, Shekna, if you want to add one more thing about sins and how how deadly it can be for our right. well-being, and then we will move to the second point, inshallah. Yeah, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned actually a passage. I'm going to try to briefly summarize it. He said, what would be a worse disease than sin in this world? 
the sin is what made the shaitan from our shepherd to an eternal enemy, uh, getting him out from the mercy of Allah to the curse of Allah. Uh, 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 sin is what got Adam, our father and Hawa, our mother, out of the Jannah of enjoyment to the dunya of suffering. Uh, sin is what drowned the whole world at the time of Nuh. Sin is what uh, uh, took the people of Thamud, the people of Lut, the people of uh, Hud, the people of Salih, uh, I mean the people of Shu'aib. Uh, sin is what made Abu Jahl die, you know, Al-Walid ibn Mughira die. Uh, sin is uh, what the poet said, رأيت الذنوب تميت القلوب وقد يورث الذل إدمانها وترك الذنوب حياة القلوب وخير لنفسك عصيانها. He's saying that I see the trend that the zunub, zunub uh, means sins, kills the heart, kills the heart. That's what I meant in the beginning, like you said, we are a spiritual being, right? It killed, kills the heart, kills the spirit. So you have a shell empty from inside. Huh? Shell empty from inside is like an animal. Yeah, I mean, like, there's no meaning. So that heart is, uh, is blocked. That soul is disturbed. So basically, Allah Azza Jal says in the Quran, Amwatun ghayru ahya. Amwatun ghayru ahya. They are dead, not alive. So they are thinking they're dead. Allah Azza Jal said, do you uh, suit al-kahf? Uh, do you see those who do things thinking they are doing good while they are doing bad? Those are the ones Allah Azza Jal. So this is the deadly, you mentioned the word deadly, and actually it is literal. <laughs> you said the deadly effect. Deadly effect is that you are dead. Now here is the key that as long as you are connected to Allah, it is not deadly. It is like a, a sickness. You see the mm, difference? Now? As long as you're connected, yes. Which is as the idea of a, a person not with Allah is like a dead. Yes, person. but but sin eventually will take you to that so state. If you leave it, you know Ibn Al-Qayyim mentioned that there are ten different levels of the Shaitan to get the person from the level of shirk from to the level of shirk. He said if he cannot enter you uh, to you from the gate of shirk, he will enter the gate of bid'ah. Uh, if he does not enter the gate of bid'ah, I mean, he entered the major sin. If not major sin, minor sin. If not minor sin, the bid'ah. If bid'ah is means like you going easy on your duties, yeah, making you like he will see where you are and take you one step less. Okay, so the sin eventually leads you to death, but you have to catch yourself. So you have to have the basic connection with Allah. Never abandon that. That's why you have to have a minimum. I tell all my brothers and sisters and my kids and all my friends, you have to have a minimum that you lose your life before you go down under it. That is a minimum, you know? I cannot transgress my five daily salah. I cannot transgress my Ramadan. I cannot transgress my, uh, you know? There has to be a minimum line. Right. You lose your life before you get to it. So once you get to it, it is like, you know, turbulence and red light. And now you have to, do, to go to the emergency room, the ER, yeah. <laughs> right. you, you have to. So I hope I hope this is clear, inshallah. Yeah. Now, Jazakallah khairan. May Allah reward you for explaining this to us. If any question, if there are any questions at this point, definitely ask. If not, we'll move to the next point, inshallah. You can either ask on Zoom or Facebook. Um, both ends, inshallah ta'ala, you can ask any question you wish. Do we have some time to mention like few things that will affect or it will come in the next point, like the things that will happen if a person com continue committing sin. Please share, share with us. Okay, number one, you will be prevented from the knowledge. So you wanted to get the knowledge, but you will not be able to get the good knowledge. Imam Malik, when Imam Shafi'i went to him, Brother Hassan, and he saw how smart and intelligent, uh, brilliant Shafi'i is. So he looked at him one, one day, he said, I think Allah Azza wa Jalla give you a special light so please do not extinguish that light with sin. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's number, number one. Number two, you feel lonely and you feel depressed in the heart because you, you, you know yourself more than anyone else. And if you are a person who worship Allah and you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, if you disobey him, it gives you that, uh, what you call misery, misery in the heart, you know. Uh, also, you will find that things getting getting harder for you getting harder for you. Um, uh, also, you will see physical weakness, physical weakness. Why I'm saying that? Because Sayyidina Hud السلام, told his people, if you do istighfar to Allah, and you know what istighfar is, right? Istighfar means seeking forgiveness. Allah will give you physical strength. So if you are disobeying Allah, opposite is going to happen, right? Right. So 
many people see, oh, I'm lethargic. I cannot exercise. I can't do that. Also, your risk will not be there. It means baraka will not be there. And the risk can be children, can be intelligence, can be money, can be happiness, can be fame, can be authority. You know what I mean? So risk right. is not only money. You, that all of this will be uh, affected. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Man yatawakkal 'ala Allahi fa huwa hasbu." You know, "Man yattaqi Allah yaj'al lahu makhrajan yarzuqhu min hasbu lahtas." Surah At-Talaq. Whoever have taqwa to Allah, Allah will give him risk from wherever they don't know. So if they don't have taqwa, it's not going to happen. And we mentioned about life and the death, and as a shell and all that. Also, it will be hard for you to do bonus ibadah. Taraweeh is going to be very hard for you, brother uh, Hassan. If uh, uh, you know people commit sin, uh, Taraweeh is going to be hard for them. Tahajjud is going to be harder, right? Reading, reading a, 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 a regular portion of Quran is the hardest. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course. That's people wondering all the time, and they're asking you and me and everybody, right? Why I cannot do? Correct. Why I cannot do? This is why you have to look to yourself. I'm not going to accuse you are a sinner and come confess to me. I'm not a priest here, but what I'm saying. Find in yourself what you do and go back to Allah. Also, Allah will give humiliation to the heart. That's the poetry I mentioned, you know. Al Hassan al Basri said, Allah will for sure humiliate whoever disobeys Him. And He said, uh, Nobody will miss Salat al Jama'ah except because of their sin. If they intend to go Jama'ah and they end up not doing it because of the sin. Uh, also, they will be, Allah will not be looking at them with the mercy. Uh, and also, people will not respect. Allah said, "Inna akramakum عند الله أتقاكم سورة الحجرات." You know, the most honorable for you are the one who have taqwa, and a person who sins does not have taqwa, right? That means he will be humiliated in front of Allah. Also, the person will lack jealousy. He will see his family committing sins, and he does not care because he himself committing sin. He will have fear from death, fear from jahannam. Uh, they are afraid because they 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 know that they are far from the jannah. Also, shyness and modesty is going to go away. Uh, 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 sin becomes habitual. Uh, shaitan will captivate the person. Then the punishment will come in societies and in individuals. So those are few things there that the ulama mentioned, Imam al Qayyim and others, among the basic seen, uh, noticed uh, impacts of sin. Subhanallah, it shakes you. Is mm. uh, one of the things like it's. From a perspective, you look at it, right? If somebody is not able to pray tarawiyah, somebody is not able to pray extra tahajjud or even tahajjud or extra Quran, so you're not able to negate your sins. Mm -hmm. now, the one way we negate our sins is asking, you know, doing good deeds. And subhanAllah, you're prohibited. Ah, uh, you see, this is magic right now. What you just said now, this is the secret of everything you are prohibited to raise your hand to seek forgiveness. And somehow. But, but, but you see, this has to continue because Allah will not do that from the first time or the 10th time or the 100th time, you know? But once it becomes habitual, then that is the fear now. You become blocked. And this is the worst thing. The worst punishment is when a person is blocked. <laughs> From saying Astaghfirullah, when you are blocked. That's why I tell my brothers and sisters, if you see yourself going with ease away from Allah, please cry. Start crying. Go down on your knees and start crying. Put your head down all night long. Say, Ya Rabbi, please, I'm sorry. Take me back. Take me back, please. Because, you know, that's what you need at that moment. Otherwise, we're lost, man. This is what else is left. What else is left? You know, if, if I cannot raise my hand and I say stuff for Allah and the things become easy for me, Wallah, this is the worst punishment, I'm telling you. You know, it is a ni'mah from Allah that you do mistake and you still are able to say stuff for Allah. Allah. Uh, yeah, this is a ni'mah, ni'mah. Still, Allah loves you. I tell people, like, they come, Sheikh, Sheikh, I disobey Allah. I said, you know what? You should be happy right now. I say, why? Well, I said, because you came here. You know? Like, because right. you just came and stepped inside the masjid and talking to me right now. That is a blessing from Allah. It means Allah still did not give up on you. He's not abandoning you yet. So, so, so be happy. So the most, so here's now I'm going to take it to an extreme because, you know, it's very scary to be knowing that you're an individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, has, now is going to ignore you. Like, you know, the silent treatment we get from our 
elder sometime and how it shatters our hearts. You know, the silent treatment is one of the most dangerous things, right? When somebody is not speaking to you and you are now void of Allah's mercy. Oh. Like, what would you do? Like, is there, so I'm going to ask you here, is there a way for us to come back from that part? If somebody goes to that extreme, there's always a way. There is a way to come back, but the problem is not that, Brother Hassan. The problem is not like there is a way or there is no way. The problem, I should ask myself, is there a way for me? You know, there is always a way, right? But is it me though? Right. That, that, that is the issue. That's the issue. We do not, that, that's why Allah make it ghaib. So you have to know, you fear him and you hope for him and you love him. Why? Because you do not know which one are you. Okay, which one am I? It, it is not, I don't have to have a sin. I might be worshipping without a sin, but not accepted, you know? Right. And no, I might, right. Yeah, I might, I might be doing a sin, but still Allah loves me. You know, Hassan right. Basri said one thing amazing, I remember it now. This will blow everybody's mind right now. Listen to this. He said some, sometimes Allah Azza wa Jal make a certain servant disobey him to break his heart so his tawbah becomes sincere and he becomes a good servant. I don't know. I Imagine reading some uh, more of the scholars saying the same, right? That sometimes Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will push someone into a sin, so he's more forgiven. He he asks Allah forgiveness. He never asks Allah ever. Heart, the heart right? is broken. The heart has right. to be broken, because imagine if he, since he's young, he's 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 raised to be a scholar, right? So he never tasted humiliation, you know, right? He never tested humiliation. So this, he does not know what it means to have to be a sinner. So how can he relate? So Allah will make him sin. SubhanAllah. That's why sometimes That's... People, people misunderstand. Allah make him sin actually because he likes him. He wants him to, to know that. It is like, you know, uh, uh, you are the CEO of a company and you put one of your brilliant empl employees who are like the employee of the month through some hardship that they earn, that they make a mistake. And now you tell them, now you taste it, now you know. <laughs> so don't do it again. <laughs> and then they remember all the time, you know what? I did that mistake. I was embarrassed. I was looked down upon. I'm not going to repeat that again. And they become actually the best employee. Not one month, but the best employee of the company. Inshallah. Right. And Allah, out of his love, he does the same for us. Right. So sometimes people don't say, why Allah make people sin? Why Allah make people sin? Because you do not, you do not understand Allah. You don't like, know. Yeah. Here, uh, Jazakallah khair. And here, I want to make the point. You know, there are a lot of people who are the best in Islamic history. You went through one of the worst. One of the folks of Malik ibn Dinar. Oh, yes. Yeah. Who was who, his own narration when he says, you know, he, I was a drunk. I was a person who would commit zina. I would do this. I would do this. And in the end, he became one of the best muhaddis. He was like a right. huge scholar. And subhanAllah, Allah would push people a certain way. And the point to be made that the door of Rahmah is always open. And this brings us to the next point. You know, Alhamdulillah, we understand sin is huge. And of course, may Allah protect us all from being among those who have gone on that end of that spectrum. However, it's still never too late to ask Allah for forgiveness and to come back. And we want to do it before Ramadan begins even. And so I'll ask you, Sheikhna, would we ever be people that would never commit sins? No. There's no way. Human beings cannot be this way? Yeah, Adam, Adam committed sin. Rasul Sallallahu say, Nasiya Adam fa nasiyat ummatu. Yani Adam forgot, so his offspring all become forgetful. Adam disobeyed all his, <laughs> it is not like original sin like uh, other groups think, no. What I'm saying is the Prophet made it clear for us. Remember the hadith we were discussing before the session that if you are not sinning, Allah will replace you with someone who sin and they know. Otherwise, how will you know Allah Rahim? How right. the name of Allah Al-Ghafoor will be in effect? Al-Ghafoor, Al-Ghafoor. Al-Ghafoor of what? If we are not sinners. Ghafoor of what? Right. When Allah said, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابٌ And I am a forgiving. غفار, by the way, means one after the other. Not غفور. Allah said, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ غَفَّارٌ يعني فعال. Means I keep doing it all the time. That means I am forgiving 
I am oft forgiving all the time. I'm always forgiving. Means there has to be someone always sinning, right? So right. Always, always repenting means always sinning. That's why I'm always forgiving. Okay. So يعني, uh, we have to know all of us are making mistakes, one mistake after the other. Yeah, and the best of the sinners are the ones who come repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this Allah give all of us, by the way. Yeah, and you cannot say that somebody will sin and Allah will abandon them right away. It's not going to happen. Allah took that upon himself. Rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. Allah Azza wa Jal uh, saying, uh, uh, my azab, I sh sh look at this amazing expression. Azabi usibu bihim an asha. My punishment, I hit with it whomever I wish. See, when he used the azab, he said, I hit whomever I wish. Okay, but when he said Rahma, he said it encompasses everything. He did not say I give it to whoever repents. He did not say that. That means Rahma of Allah cover even the sinner while he's sinning. Tell me, Brother Hassan, that somebody commits sin and he's not exposed, Allah did not cover him with his Rahma. Hmm? That somebody who did the sin and, and then Allah did not expose them or Allah defended them even when people started exposing them. You know, it reminds me, Ibn Qayyim, rahimullah, it's, it connects, which is he said, you know, if people are impressed by you, it's an amazing quote. He says, if people are impressed by you, know that he, people are impressed with the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept your sins hidden. Oh, yes. Yes. Allah, Imagine if he that. Out of, right. And it's so, like, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is, you just mentioned it, it's by mercy that Allah is keeping our sins hidden from each other. Imagine if, like, you know, it was like social media, our, or our forehead, we have, like, yesterday, <laughs> today, he did this sin. Nobody would want to each other and it shows the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by this point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us so much that he keeps our sins hidden so to summarize that point there's two parts right which is absolute perfection perfection absolute perfection is with Allah our state of perfection itself is that we mix commit sins and Allah will forgive us is that yes. correct of a statement that's, our that's perfection a, we are not perfect unless in Jannah actually. Okay. Angel, angels are not perfect, even right. though they are, they are not sinning. They are still not perfect creation. But, but you know, philosophically speaking, what you, what you said makes sense. Like, we cannot say our state of perfection. We are the best of humans when we err and come back. That's the idea. يعني. But nobody makes mistake is, is perfect, and nobody who does not make mistake is perfect. Either. Right. And the angels are not perfect and shayateen are not perfect and we are in the middle, we are not perfect. Right. Right? But perfection is uh, what Allah prescribed for you. So it comes back to what you said. So you are the best human being. That's why Rasul Sallallahu said the best of human beings are the one who make mistake and come back. Right. So if you don't make mistake, you are not a, a best human being. If you always make mistake, you are not the best of human being. You are the best only if you continue making mistakes and come back, it does not mean that let me go make more mistakes so I can come back. It doesn't mean that. <laughs> right. Otherwise, it's not mistakes now. They are intentional now. So it's, it's, it's not an issue. Yeah. So, so that's the summary. But we have to remember that the dua of the malaika, Rabbana wasi'ta kulla shay'in rahmatan wa ilm. You encompassed everything with your rahma and your knowledge. And Allah say about himself, wa rahmati wasi'at kulla shay'in. My rahma encompasses uh, everything and Allah created hundred different types of rahmah, ninety-nine of them is saved for us Yom al Qiyamah, you know. To, to, one to, we're sharing all right now. One we're sharing, everything is sharing. Is that so just out of a quick tangent, the mercy that we show, like a mother shows to her child, or the animals show to each other, or the human beings and all, is that part of that one part? That oh, yeah. mercy within everything. us among each other? Mercy is not only for human. The one percent is not only for human. It is for all kainat, for insects, for everything. We sharing one. We don't even see, right? We sharing one percent, brother Hassan. Allah. And if it's just one, one part, we can only imagine the ninety-nine parts. So then, inshallah, Allah will come to the third point. So, Shaykhna, there is a beautiful hadith, Hadith Qudsi. 
of, no. of, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about sins and about forgiveness. Oh. If you could please share with us and share your insights and, you know, make us cry. Bismillah. Which, which is the hadith? Which hadith are you referring which to? Is that if you had sins reaching all the way up to the clouds. Oh. <laughs> This hadith summarizes for us who is Allah and who are we. That's how I look at it. It shows exactly how helpless, how tiny, how full of shortcomings are we, and how perfect, how able, how uh, great our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, this is the hadith. So Allah Azza wa Jal, it's a long hadith, but the part that we're talking about here, he says, O my servant, لو بلغت ذنوبك عنان السماء عنان السماء يعني if your sins, Allah is talking to one person, not all humanity, if your sins amount to the level that if it's stacked, it will reach the heavens. And if one person of us, their sins are stacked up to that level, and then you come to me, and that's the secret here, you come to me. You come to me, not to anybody else. As long as you don't have shirk and you confess, I will forgive whatever you did, without even caring. I'm not gonna even count. I'm not gonna even tell you, no, there are hundred or there are thousand or there are a million, or you have been disobeying me for 20 years or 10 years or all your life. I'm la ubali. You know la ubali? Like when we say, you know, I don't care. You know, when, when somebody tell you something big, huh? and say, you know what, I don't care. You know, Allah Azza wa Jal, now he's the one who says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And you coming there and crying and said, Ya Allah, oh God, I did this, I did this, I did this. I said, no worries. It is not even as if it is, as if it is, as, is, as if it was not done. Ghafar tulak. If you come to me with the like of the foam of the ocean, with sins, but you come sincere to me, Ghafar tulak wala ubali. I will forgive you without even, uh, Entertaining the idea of 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 uh, of of, uh, of of counting, you know, of counting. There are many narrations in 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 this hadith. The many narrations in in this hadith. So hadith Anas radiyallahu anhu. Allah says the whole hadith. يعني يا ابن آدم أو صن في آدم ما دعوتني ورجوتني. As long as you are invoking me and begging me. Invoking me and begging me, غفرتُ لك. I always forgive you. على ما كان فيك. Whatever shortcomings you have, ولا أبالي without caring. يا ابن آدم, if your sins reaches to the heavens, I will forgive you as long as you seek my forgiveness. I will not care about what you did. يا ابن آدم, إنك لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا. With the particles, the count of the particles of the dust of this earth, sins, and لا تشرك بي شيئا you do not commit any shirk with me. I will forgive you the amount of the particles of the whole earth. All this can count as forgiveness. If you have ten billion trillion sins, I will give you ten billion trillion forgiveness and more. So three things Allah mentioned. As long as you invoke me and beg me. As long as you seeking my forgiveness, as long as you are not committing shirk, I will forgive you no matter what. Subhanallah. So that is the hadith. That is the hadith for you. So if your amount goes that high, if your amount goes that horizontal, you know, diagonal up, right. horizontal, you know, wide or tall, or counting. So Allah gave us three things, Brother Hassan. Amazing, huh? Amazing types of measurements. If you stack them up high, or if you widen them like this horizontal, or if you want to count them by particles of the sand and uh, all of that. 
It doesn't matter with Allah Azza wa Jalla. Forgiveness is is, a, you cannot, is you cannot, massive. There's no comparison. No, you cannot measure it. This is not measurable. It is not measurable. There is um, so to add to that, there's nothing honestly you can top that. There's, I mean, it's, it's also Hadith Qudsi, by the way, which is by itself is a very different category of Hadith. Sahih. Uh, and one thing, as the Sheikh mentioned, there is no way we can measure it to a point. One of the narration it says, you know, if, if we were to become a people who stop asking Allah forgiveness and to show that Allah, Allah dislikes it when we don't ask Him. Of course. And Allah dislikes us when we don't ask Him. And if we became a people who stop asking forgiveness, Allah will replace us. Right. With people who will come and they will commit mistakes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He loves to forgive, which as you, Shaykh, now you said the name of Allah's names, uh, uh, you know, Ghaffar and such, and He loves to forgive. And Allah will then, they will make mistakes and Allah will forgive them. Right. Allah, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it. And to have it any other way, it's not uh, to our success and it's not to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. So yeah, 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 the names of Allah, Allah said we call him and invoke him by his names and attributes. And and his names of attributes to be in effect, you have to have a relation, a need for it. Right. Like like you have to ask Allah al-Aleem because you need the ilm. You have to ask Allah al-Kareem because you need the karam, generosity. An honor. You have to ask Allah al Qadir, the, the able, because you want Qudra. You ask Allah al Razzaq, because you want Rizq. And you ask Allah Rahim, because you want what? Rahma. If you are not sinning, what, what, you know, if you are not full of shortcomings, why you need Rahma? If you are not sinning, why you need Ghafoor? Huh? Why you need a Tawab? That's, that's the idea, right? That's the whole idea. Why you need a Nur? Because you need his Nur. So the names of Allah, because you need them. Yes. <clears throat> And this is one way we get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is our fourth point, right? It's the idea that, as, as we just said right now, there's no scenario for human beings that we will not commit mistakes. No. There's, there's no, no scenario mistakes. that we will not commit mistakes. And there's a reason that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that merciful, because we will make mistakes. And to see that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that relationship that is, and how you can get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we just mentioned a few of the stories of what Sheikh Mamdu mentioned and many others that we mentioned about the scholars. And you see the Sahabas, all were what they were before and what they became. No. If, you know, it's someone who was not a Muslim, became Muslim and became one of the best. People say, you know, Umar al-Khattab, if we were to look at it, if it wasn't for Islam, who would be? Would he be remembered? Now in UN Charter, his statement, right? Who, how can you slave someone who was born free? That statement is in a charter. If it wasn't for Islam, nobody would know him. If, no. You know, historical context, if you look at it, like he would have been what? Maybe the tribal leader after yeah, Hashem. Yeah. Hashem? Like, who would have been? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made whoever committed sins, he made them even better. And Adam alayhi salam, and I think this kind of, we can summarize it with the ability for, see how different, and by the way, the reason again, both committed sins, Adam alayhi salam and Iblis. Iblis yes. became arrogant. Adam right. alayhi salam did what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throw the Rasulullah, we know, the best. <laughs> and and this point is amazing, right? Would you just mention, I want like you, I would like you to explain that uh, that beautiful dua. Look at it, that not only that Adam alayhi salam made a mistake. You know, sometime here in our lives, when our children make mistakes or somebody make mistakes, we just shun them out. If something happened in the gym, the masjid, we just ban them. If something happened with the court of law, we just announce the punishment and they're in the prison or whatever. Mm. But look at it in this particular case. It's not just about the punishment. It's about how can you now go back to Allah. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't just punish them. Hey, now you descend from Jannah. You're outside Jannah. No. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes one step further. The Malik, the Malik, the 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 Lord of the worlds is now coming. The King of the worlds is now coming and saying, "Let me teach you how can you make a stakfar to me, and how you can get closer to me." So, Sheikh, now please share with us that beautiful dua that summarizes the entire session of today that we are trying to do our better uh, prepare ourselves for. Allah. You see, what Allah taught Adam is not teaching Adam alone. He's teaching Adam and all his offspring and telling them that this is what you're going to do and this is what you need to do. This is what you're going to do like your parents did. 
you will disobey me sometimes, right? Intentionally or unintentionally. But here is the dua that will save you out. And this is a rahmah of Allah that he's teaching you how to come out of your problem. Rabbana ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ آه. ظلمنا is a key. تَغْفِرْ وَتَرْحَمْ is a key. خَاسِرِينَ is a key. Okay? You have to look for key words in any statement right. you make. Right? So right. you have, you have, Look at this, Brother Hassan. The beginning of the ayah, you are saying zulm. You know what zulm is, right? Transgression. Injustice, Injustice right. or transgression. What is the last ayah? Khasirin, losers. Right. So we transgress, we are losers. Right. We transgress, we are losers. And what is in the middle? Forgiveness. If, if you, you do not us, stop at this station, you will end up to the next station. So first, mm, right, the yes. that. so first issue, you transgress. Huh? If you do not stop in the next station Allah made, you're going to stop at the last station, which is khasirin like shaitan. shaitan. And the people who actually are part of Jahannam, or the, the they are khasirin. all khasirin. That's the loser, which is interesting, right? We have this very much in our culture, the idea of losers. Yes, but the real loser Allah is called us a loser. Right. Allah, in the Khasirin, the Ladina Khasiru, and Fusahum, who are Halib, Yahumal Kiyama. Allah said that the true losers are the ones who lost themselves and their family when Yahumal Kiyama. He did not say for Dunya. Allah, the Likah or Husran al Mubin. That's truly the manifest uh, loss. So a person can lose, but they bounce out of it. They can come out of it, no problem. But in Akhirah, there is no coming out. So Brother Hassan, the summary of this is, we transgress ourselves and do justice to ourselves by shirk. In the shirk al You know, by associating with Allah, or by disobeying Allah, or by abandoning our prayer, or by not doing dhikr, or by committing sin, minor, major, you name it. All of this, all of this can, can be forgiven Huh? This like for loan forgiveness, you know, COVID-19, now they said loan forgiveness and all of that, right? So Allah Azza wa said, you are in the worst of situations. You can be forgiven if you say that. Just say that. Oh Allah, I transgressed myself. And if you do not forgive me and have mercy on me, I will be among the losers. That is the, they're calling me the Sotul Asr. So, <laughs> so uh, I'll be among the losers, right? Yeah, Allah. Right. So, so that's what Adam alayhi salam said. So please remember that ayah. And if you can say it in every salah, even some of the scholars said in tashahud, Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana tarhamna lana kunana wal khasirin, Allah will forgive you automatically, inshallah, rabbil alameen. Jazakum da'u khayr, may Allah subhanahu wa make us among those who are forgiven. Um, this is the first session, of course, this was the book, this talks about sins and the forgiveness of Allah. I hope you understood, I hope you learned. Uh, what the the what the sins have the negative impact of sins, which Sheikh not mentioned, five is shorter knowledge, misery, physical weakness, um, ibadas, many ibadas will be missed. Um, your honor in front of people, in front of Allah, all is at stake. Many of these are the consequences of actually sinning. And Allah wants to protect us from sinning. The next point we mentioned definitely that our state with Allah subhanahu wa taala is we will all commit sins, but the best of us are those who commit sins, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we also learned, is the most forgiving to a point that if we were designed, let's say we have cups and our sins were these cups and we put on the earth and we start stacking them, stacking them, stacking them, and they went all the way up to the heavens, as the Hadith Qudsi said, and we don't commit shirk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only forgive our sins, he will not even remember them. He just yes. said right land valley that he would not even be men mentioned. Khalas is over. And that's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ultimately, if you look at it, anyone who committed sins, most of the people who committed sin, Allah protected them from uh, you will see their future and their past, they became better. And this is one way Allah subhanahu wa brings us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring close to him. And this is one way we can get closer to him as our father was taught the dua 
which is Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakuna min al-khasirin. Oh, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. And if you were not to forgive us, we will be indeed among the losers. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me, us from being losers. And here, end of the day of judgment. I mean, Shekna, anything you want to add before we end the session today? I think we summarized it well. Alhamdulillah. Oh. I ask Allah the Almighty to save us from all fitan and all problems and all shirk and all disobedience. And I ask Allah to make us among those who come back to him all the time. من الأوابين المنيبين المتقين المحسنين المستغفرين المسترحمين. أنا أسأل الله عز وجل تبلس this community تبلس all the Muslims and I ask Allah عز وجل to bless us with opening our masjid back in the month of Ramadan. I ask Allah عز وجل to forgive all our sins. I ask Allah to save all humanity from this pandemic and I ask Allah عز وجل to make us enjoy the نعمة of safety and family and social life again. والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم. Jazakumullah khairan. Inshallah, next week we will have our next session about addictions and how the, the science behind addictions and how we can do our part from Islamic perspective. And we'll have Dr. Afsana Haq will inshallah join us. So we will have a good understanding of addictions as well. And we'll talk about it, the motivations of this. Uh, one of the best reminders I can give you is make, start making your istighfar now. You want to enter Ramadan with a clean slate so you can add good deeds. Not that you ask forgiveness in Ramadan. So you don't have time to ask for more good deeds. So start asking forgiveness from Allah now. Clean now, your yeah. slate now. And inshallah ta'ala, when you enter Ramadan, you just bank on those good deeds, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairin. Jazakumullah khairin. Jazakumullah khairin. Jazakumullah khairin. Jazakumullah khairin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakumullah khairin. Jazakumullah khairin.